It appears that there's been a murder. Because this new microphone is killing it. Ah! News from the booth! Hey villagers, welcome back to the VoiceOver Village. I'm Rick McIver, your village idiot, and today, man on the clock, because, yeah, I have an hour and 55 minutes before my next session, so, you know, let's move this along, shall we? Really wanted to fit this microphone review in today because if not, it's going to be another two weeks, and, and and it'll be too late, and you need to know this information now. This is the new microphone from SE Electronics. It's their only USB microphone, and it's called the Neom. 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 I really appreciate when microphone manufacturers actually name their microphones instead of giving them long numbers and letters and stuff that are random and make no sense. Thank you. SE Electronics. Oh my gosh, I'm in such a rush. I didn't even straighten out the table. I mean, look at this. Yeah, that's better. Like you've never made a video before. Before we get started, 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 I wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by me. Yeah, I went and bought another microphone. Shush. This time, I had a really good reason. I don't remember that reason right now, but I had one. But I'm really glad I bought this because it has blown me away, really. This is the no regret face. Let's take a closer look at this mic. Cue the gratuitous B-roll. The Neom is the first USB microphone from SE Electronics. It's a two-third inch diaphragm with a handmade capsule. I mean, that's actually pretty cool. All of the capsules for SE Electronic microphones are handmade, from their Neve microphone all the way down to their USB microphone. It's a condenser mic with a cardioid pickup pattern and a frequency response of 20 to 20,000 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want more technical information, go to the website, or I'll put it up right here. Pause it. Take a look. Stop talking, fat man. Get to the good stuff. Compare it to other microphones. I don't know why I went German there. That's a little strange. I'm not German. Our first microphone is the one you've been listening to. This is the Neom. I'm going to remind you to put on headphones for this section because you'll be able to get a lot better idea of how things sound. We're going to do a desktop stand comparison first because I think it's fair. When you buy a microphone that comes with a desk stand, you might not have a boom arm to get it close to your mouth. And if you don't, you have to rely on the desk stand. So I think it's fair to have a comparison. Shut up, get to the comparisons, fine! Hey, this is the NT-USB Rode Mini tiny microphone that's really far away from my mouth. When you use the provided desk stand with this microphone, it is just too far away, especially the tonality of this mic. It's a thin mic to start with, when you get it this far away from your mouth, it sounds pretty thin. Not a big fan in this configuration. I think its best use case is probably for a podcast with multiple guests. That way you can use either the software that it works with or the, uh, I think it's called the Rodecaster. Anyway, as a solo microphone for voice acting or podcasting, you at least have to get it closer to your mouth. And we're back to the Neom. Hi, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you for sticking around. This is the Neom. Now, something I didn't mention earlier is that on the front of this microphone is the mute button. You see that little SE Electronics logo? That's actually the mute button. So when I press it, oh, hold on. <laughs> now you can't hear a thing that I say. It blinks red. That's how you know it's working. Let's go to the next microphone. You are now listening to the AKG Aura. This is uh, AKG's newest microphone. I like the design of it. It's up high on the desk stand. It gets close to your mouth. I like that part. I don't like the handling noise. Really loud. Right now I have it set to the cardioid polar pattern just for the front here. If I set it to the omni pattern, the desk and handling noise goes away but uh, you hear the rest of the room as well. And I have the window open right now because it's hot in my office and just deal with it. So we're back, here we are. This is the Neon sitting on its desk stand, which is sitting on the workbench, which is also somewhere in a basement in Kansas City. Now you know where I live. That's weird, I shouldn't have said that. Let's go check out the next mic. This tiny little thing that you see before me is the Tula microphone. It is using its provided desk stand, and when you do that, it's really far away from your mouth. Kind of a bummer, but 
it is what it is. This is not the ideal way to use this microphone. <laughs> The desk stand maybe is there for if you're going to play an instrument or just for out of basic necessity. It has not been my experience that this microphone sounds very good when it's this far away from your mouth. Back to the Neom. And we're back here with the SE Electronics Neom, their first USB microphone. On the front of this microphone, you will find three knobs. The top knob is the gain control for the microphone. You can turn it all the way down and you can't hear anything. You can turn it all the way up and really get it loud but you don't need to. I have it set right now, right at about the fourth notch. This thing has gained for days. The bottom two knobs actually work in conjunction. They are monitoring balance knobs. The top one adjusts how much microphone you get in your headphones, and the bottom one adjusts how much signal you're getting from your computer or whatever's feeding the microphone. It could be music, it could be podcast guests, whatever. You can adjust the balance on the fly really quickly. It's quite nice. Let's go to the next microphone. And here we have the Neat Microphones Bumblebee Two. Up to this point, this has been one of my favorite microphones tonally. I think it has a really good, nice, warm, clean tone uh, for what you get. It's 99 bucks. You can't beat it. However, it's on its stand. Like the other microphones, it's pretty far away from my mouth at this point. I will put it on the boom arm here in a minute and we'll do another test. But for what it is right here, this is how it sounds. The Neat Microphones Bumblebee Two. Hey, look at you, still here with me watching this microphone review. Thank you so much. I have a little secret for you. I want to show you something. You might have noticed it in the last clip. Come in really close. Look at the microphone knobs here. Look at the dial, the number at the end of the dial. It's 11. Yeah, this microphone goes to 11. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and stick this on a boom arm put it up close to my mouth and then we'll actually see how it sounds compared to the other microphones then i'll do it i'll do the snap thing and maybe i can get it to work it, i'll do the snap thing maybe it'll work no i'll just i'll just cut then i'll just we'll just uh, cut over to the new shot actually what i probably should do is show you how it detaches from the stand and hooks to the boom arm so let's do that really quick also, it'll give you a good idea of the handling noise. The way this microphone works is it has a little mic clip that attaches to the base, and that actually will also attach to the stand. So all I have to do is remove it from the mic clip, like that. Um, maybe I can just, this is awkward now. Here, here, I can do it like this. This is so easy, I can do it with one hand while I'm talking on the mic. <laughs> I'm just gonna twist this off of the base here, and it, there's a little bottom bit that actually unscrews too, like right here, see that, like that? So easy. This is a, such good television. There you go. There's the base. Separate. And I like that the little bit doesn't fall out. For some of the other mic stands, when you take it off, the little screw falls out and you have to keep track of it. This one holds in place. Nice. This is like a regular mic clip here, but it's not. It's a little smaller. They say it's a, like a regular mic clip, but I've tried it on a couple other clips and it doesn't actually work. You have to use this one. Here, we'll do it together. Let's do it together. You and me. I feel a little bit like Bob Ross. Happy little mic stands. Do this. Pop it right back on there. Oh, I gotta tighten this up so it doesn't fall on my face. And it's just that easy. There it is. Now, one thing I will say, when you get this closer to your mouth, it is a hot mic. It's a hot, this is a hot mic. It's a hot, hot mic. The gain is set right now at like the nine o'clock position, which I think is the second notch or third notch little line on there but you know hey you got gain for days on this so there you go this is the microphone on the boom arm let's go to the next microphone on the boom arm and we're live okay this is the rode nt usb mini i'll just call it the mini on the front of this there's a little headphone dial to adjust your volume of your headphones and it clicks when you push it in and i always assumed it was a mute button because the light goes out and then i can't hear anything in my headphones it's only a headphone mute. This still picks up what you're saying. So when you click that button and you think you're muted because you can't hear yourself and you say something that you don't want anybody else to hear, they can still hear it. I don't understand why they do it. If you know, let me know because strange. Anyway, let's turn this. I didn't really do anything. <laughs> and we're back. This is the SE Electronics. Easy for you to say, voice actor. I have noticed if I get too close to it, it does have quite a proximity effect and it is very dark, um, which is one of the reasons why I think it works so well on the stand. 
When it's a little bit farther away like this, it doesn't lose that low end, and by pulling away, you get more high end. Kind of like it. But it is a little bit dark if you get too close. So for this mic, I'd say a fist, fist and a half. Maybe not a whole hang loose, but a fist and a half might work best. Let's go to the next microphone. This is the AKG Ara on the boom arm, closer to my mouth, about a fist away. On the boom arm, the handling noise is the problem with this microphone. However, when you don't touch the microphone, it actually sounds pretty good. I like the aesthetic. I like the design of this microphone. It is a lot of plastic. The whole thing is just made of plastic, which is different than the Neom. The Neom is all metal construction. It feels solid. This feels a little rinky-dink, um, like it'll break, but Overall, it's not a bad mic. Back to the Neom. That's two. Here we are back with the SE Electronic. I can't even SE Electronic. SE Electronic. Here we are back with the Neom. Let's do a quick side rejection and back rejection test since we're all together right now. This is the front of the microphone. Here I am at, this is the 90 degrees of the microphone. Uh, here I am. This is the back of the microphone. 90 degrees and I'm back on the front. Boy, wasn't that fun. That wasn't annoying and handling noise and all that at all. And I think I'm gonna, oh, it's broken. Okay, let's go to the next microphone while I fix this. Uh, hey there, this is the Tula that's on the boom arm and it is up closer to my mouth. And I know that this is a plosive sensitive microphone, so I'm doing my best to kind of talk across here. I don't have my pop filters with me because they're currently growing in the back garden you'll see in the next video. The Tula is one of my more favorite microphones as a USB microphone for two reasons. One, it has a lot of functionality to it. It has noise cancellation. Uh, it also has its own self recorder. It has the ability to accept a lavalier. It's like my go-to mic because it's like the Swiss army knife of microphones. But on top of all that, it sounds good. It's flat. Uh, it doesn't punch anything too high or too low, and it allows me to have a fairly good recording. So that's the Tula on the boom arm. Let's go back to the Neom. Come on, let's keep it going. Okay, here is the tap test. We're going to do tapping on the desk. We're going to do tapping on the boom arm. We're going to do tapping on the mic. That's how it sounds. This setup typically um, is not very forgiving with a tap test because this bench that I use has all these metal springs and stuff. So when you tap it, right, let's go to the next microphone. And here we are with the Neat Microphones Bumblebee 2. And this time it's on the boom arm and it's closer to my mouth and it sounds a lot better. Like I said, one of my more favorite microphones because of its tonality. It also has some functionality with the little button here. You can mute other microphones you commute to. This one you have a, a three-way lighted button that allows you to adjust the gain and the balance between the signal and your microphone and your headphones. It's a little confusing because it's all on colors on this little light, but it does the thing. You just have to remember about the lights and stuff. But this is the neat microphone Bumblebee 2. It's on the boom arm. This is how it sounds. Let's go back to the Neom. And we're back here with the Neom microphone on the boom arm. And that was our last microphone, but it is not our last test. I want to do one more test. The Neom claims that it works really well with mobile devices like iPads or smart pads or patty pads or iPhones or Android phones, or it just lists all of them. And so I have an iPhone and I know that iPhones are a little tricky. They have to have this little special adapter, but this claims to be able to work well with an iPhone. So we're going to test that. We're going to plug it in and try to record on Twisted Wave and see how it goes. All right. Uh, so for this next bit, I am actually switched over to the Tula microphone to record this while I try to get this worked out. I am going to screen close all these apps. God, you crazy. I'm going to screen record this. So hopefully I'm able to get this to work just fine. There we go. Screen is recording. Microphone here, cable with the little media adapter that it needs. Twisted Wave recorder. Here we go. Now, that's open. Okay, it's plugged in. Oh, oh, I have power to the microphone. The microphone light just came on, and I'm getting levels, actually, on this microphone. That's interesting. When I hook the Tula up, and I've tried to do this with the Tula, I have to turn on the recording bit of the of this program before this actually kicks on and, and is active. But it seems like with the Neom, you plug it in, it's live, it's hot, it's ready to rock. That's weird, I shouldn't have said it like that, but I did. You hit add, 
and you'd select your, you're going to do a mono recording and we have to hit record. So now, yes, allow. And look at that. I'm recording. And now I'm recording. This is the Neom. Uh, and it's recording lovely with good levels right at negative 12. Right, right smack dab where you want it. Um, fan friggin tastic. So I hope this sounds okay. Uh, we'll uh, merge it with this thing. Well, this is off now. But for you, it doesn't matter. This is recording. It's working really well. I bet it works with a lot of other apps too. Well, I would call that a successful test. I'm going to go put all those things together, listen to it about a million times, and then we'll come back and talk about it. You know, whenever I do one of these microphone reviews, it always takes me so much longer than I originally think it's going to take me, and this is no exception. So I was on the clock, but I did not make it that day at all. But it gave me the benefit of really listening to all those different microphones and all those different takes. So here are my thoughts. The SE Electronics Neom, fantastically built microphone. It is solid. It sounds really good. And here's what I really, really like about it. Um, you can use the desk stand and get good audio. That's kind of rare, actually. Most microphones that come with a desk stand, it makes the microphone pretty much useless. But with this, they were able to dial it in and raise it up enough so that you actually get pretty good audio from the desk stand. Here's what I like about it tonally. Mostly, it has, I don't know how to say this other than to say, in the low end, it picks up, it's very articulate in the low end. I have gravel in my voice. It's part of my voice print. A lot of microphones smooth that over, and that's fine. But if I need that gravel, I'll either go to my 416, or now I have this. If I'm traveling, this will work really, really well because it'll pick up that sharpness in the gravel of my voice. That's what I like about it. Now, overall, all of the mics we compared are very different. They have very different tonal qualities to them. If I had to rank them, I have some notes here. If I had to rank them, um, I still really like the Tula. The Tula sound to me, especially when it's on the boom arm and close to my mouth, it's just so pleasing. Um, next, I would go with the SE Neom. Yeah, the Neom is a fantastic microphone. I do still like the Bumblebee. It also has a very nice but different quality. It's not as articulate in the low end, but it has tonally, it's such a nice microphone. Uh, the Mini, yeah, I'll just leave that one out. Uh, and the Aura, not compared to these new microphones, it just didn't hold up. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, it's been a journey for me, that's for sure. <laughs> if you're looking for some more microphone reviews, I have a whole bunch. I'll put them over there. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time.